Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Applied Energistics tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at some useful little tools that you may or may not end up using in Applied Energistics. These are, none of these are strictly necessary, but they all have their uses, and uh, I suppose if you find them useful, then great. So we're going to go from left to right. We're going to be talking about the Entropy Manipulator the charge staff, the color applicator, which you're may, you probably are going to want to craft an MEIO port if you want to use. It'll also come in handy later in the next episode when we talk about something else. And the network tool. Okay, so from left to right. First, the entropy manipulator. To craft this thing, you need a pure or normal flux crystal, an energy cell, an engineering processor, and two iron ingots. And this gets you the entropy manipulator. Now, when you first craft it, it has no energy. You need to put energy into it using, you guessed it, the charger. It'll go in there, and it'll charge up. This one's already fully charged, so uh, anyway. It takes 200,000 AE, which is the equivalent of about 3,000 redstone flux. So what does this entropy manipulator do? Well, it manipulates energy states. But what does that mean? Well, it means that if you right-click on a piece of sand, it uses some energy in the staff and turns it into glass. Okay? If I go over here and right-click on a log, it cooks it into charcoal. If I right-click just randomly on the ground, it'll tend to light a fire. Okay, so it can be an easy way to light a fire. It... it it, if I, if I right-click, basically what it's doing is it's increasing the energy state of whatever it is that I click on, right? And if there's nothing you can do to it, it lights a fire. I could, for example, grab some cobblestone. I think this works. Let's see. And click it into smooth stone. But then if I click again, there's nothing else you can do to the smooth stone, so it just lights a fire. But there's more. If I hold shift and right click on something, it removes energy from it. So if I hold shift and right click on this water, it turns into ice. So you could use the entropy manipulator to make a bridge over, or, over some water if you wanted. Now I can't turn this glass back into sand, but I can turn grass into dirt. If I right click on this ice, it'll go back into water. Can't do anything with the wood. Or the leaves. You just got to experiment with it and see what things you can click on with it and what things you can't click on with it. I could turn the stone back into cobblestone. So cool stuff like that. So that's the entropy manipulator. It's kind of just a, a fun little tool. And if I put it in here when it doesn't have, when it's not full up, it will slowly um, recharge. Got a creative energy cell here. So that's the entropy manipulator. Okay. Next we have the charge staff. The charge staff is the simplest thing to craft up here. It's just a charge surface quartz crystal on some iron ingots. Now, the charge staff is very, very simple. It's a melee weapon. If I go ahead and spawn a spider... Where is the spider? Why is he... Oh, I'm peaceful, aren't I? Ha! Let's spawn a spider. If I, right, if I click him with the charge staff... Well, if I hit him with it... It, it deals some damage, so it dealt three hearts of damage, um, which is much more than I would do with my normal hand. Now this reminds me, another thing you can do with the Entropy Manipulator is whack things with it and set them on fire. So I can set that spider on fire by hitting him with the Entropy Manipulator, the Charge Staff. You can see when I hit him with the Charge Staff, you can see some little purple lightnings. And it just deals damage. Deals quite a bit of damage, but it does uh, run out of power quite quickly. You know, you can see it charging up, and that's fully charged. That's the charge staff. Next, we have the color applicator. We'll talk about that last, actually. I want to talk about the network tool next, because it's simpler. The network tool is crafted, and this is a shapeless recipe. It doesn't matter how you arrange these, uh, these things. A chest, a calculation processor, an illuminated panel, doesn't have to be bright, it can be any of them, and a Certus Quartz or another Quartz wrench. Gives you the network tool. Now, the network tool 
basically it gives you information about your ME network. If I right click for instance on this ME controller, it'll show me all of the things that are connected to this network. It'll also show me how it's stored amount of power and it's maximum amount of power. They're both the same because I have a creative energy cell. It'll also show you the overall energy usage of 17 RF per tick right now and the energy generation of zero because this creative cell is just outputting exactly what it uses. You can click on this button to change the power units from redstone flux to joules or the AE uh, energy or energy units from IC2 or watts which is in joules and stuff and all these things. So that's one of the things that it does. The other thing that it does, if I right click on nothing, is that it has um, inventory for um, upgrade cards. Okay? So if you right click, if you have this in your inventory and you access a machine that can take upgrade cards, you'll see the inventory of the network tool right down here. So this is a great way to store a, bu uh, your, uh, to store a bunch of um, upgrade cards on your person uh, using the network tool. So that's pretty cool. And you can take them in and out of that tool. It also has another functionality. Up here you see transparent facades. Controls visibility of facades while the network tool is on your toolbar. Basically what this does is that if you have facades, and this is going to take a while, but I let's search up facade. I should have used the, um, the other thing. Let's just grab some uh, cable facades. If I was to whack one on. And I go in here and I set this to this. That facade will be transparent while I have this in my hotbar. So it lets you see through your facades so that you can work on the stuff behind it. All right? The network tool also allows you to remove things from your uh, your network. So you can you can remove stuff from it. So you can see through your facades. It stores cards. It shows you what's on your network. It's pretty cool. It's pretty darn useful. Now, the color applicator. The color applicator is crafted using an energy cell, a 4K ME storage component, two iron ingots, and a formation core. It looks like a paint roller because it technically is a very high-tech paint roller. Okay, there's a couple ways to use this. If I go ahead and grab some dyes, this works with any dyes as well as paintballs from AE2. But we're going to talk about how to make paintballs in the next episode because we're going to talk about the matter condenser in its own video. One of the ways that you can use this thing, because it doesn't do anything right now. It's empty. It has no effect on anything. you got to put some paint in it. How do you do it? Well, there's two methods. First method is that you can actually put it in the slot of an ME chest. And then if you have items in your inventory that you want to put into this thing, you can stick it in there. Okay, and then when you pull it out, this is what it looks like when it has paint. Okay, it, it looks like that. You can see that I've used up some of the bytes and one of the types. You have 27 different types of dye in here and up to 512 bytes. So, pretty cool. If I hold shift and roll my mouse wheel around, you can um, set the uh, color. But since there's only one color in here right now, it doesn't do anything. So, let's go ahead and grab some purple dye and we'll do the same thing. We'll stick this in here. You can stick multiple dyes in this thing at one time. So you can see it's currently set to red. If I hold shift and roll my mouse button, I can set it to purple. Okay. And the way this works is I can just right click it on any block that can be painted. Such as ME cables, perhaps. Or hardened clay. Or wool. Or, I forgot to grab one, but it works on glass as well. Let's play some glass. Stained glass. Pretty cool. However, you can also use it to remove paint from stuff. The way you do that is you use snowballs. So if I go ahead and put some snowballs in this paint roller, and I switch to... I got some Fluix as well. Maybe that's what it means. It says Fluix. Hmm. Don't know. I know you you can use snowballs. Hmm. 
Ah, there we go. We've used the snowballs to remove paint from cables. You can't remove paint from other blocks, but you can remove paint from cables using snowballs. Cool. So that can be a way to adjust the color of your cables without breaking them. Now, I said that it, that's one way of putting stuff into this uh, into this applicator. The probably the better way is to use the MEIO port. The MEIO port is crafted. Ah, it messed up the recipe. Well, let's fix it. Where's my iron ingots? I don't know what's going on with these crafting benches. They just don't want to play along. It's crafted with two ME drives, a logic processor, two iron ingots, an ME glass cable, and three regular glass. Not sure why it's not quartz glass, but it's regular glass. The ME IO port. Now, what you do is you connect it to your network, okay? And when you go into it, it has a couple of different functions. It's got some operation modes, move to output when empty, move to output when work is done, move to output when full, whatever. It can take some upgrade cards, like an acceleration card, and who knows what else. What it does is it has two functions. It can transfer data in a direction, either to the network or to a cell. So essentially, the way this works is, like, if you had a, a storage cell that had some items on it, and you wanted to get the items off that storage cell, you could use this. What we're going to do is use our color applicator. So currently, this is set to transfer data to the network. So if I put this in here, that didn't work. It did work. So it's taken everything out of it. It just didn't register that it was empty until I rolled the, the mouse wheel. But it just pulled all the dies and everything out and put them back into our ME network. See? Now the useful bit is when I flop it the other way. And it will allow me to very quickly take all of the items that can go into the roll, into the color applicator and put them in. So we got a red dye, our fluix, which is from our snowballs, orange dye, purple, red, and as many as we want. Okay? So that's the use for the MEIO port. It's a much better way of filling this if you've got a bunch of dyes in your uh, network. So that's the color applicator. Just go crazy. Paint stuff. Paint whatever you want. Can I paint a sheep? Let's find out. That's a gas. I don't want to spawn one of them. Sheep. Sheep. I can't paint a sheep. Aw. Too bad. <laughs> but the color applicator does allow you to paint other things. Basically, if it's colorable, you can, you know, paint it. I can't paint uh, the cobblestone, though. I mean, the stone. So you can paint stuff using the color applicator. It's pretty darn cool. Um, so these are interesting tools. They might not be the most useful thing in the universe, but they are fun and they have their use. The network tool is definitely seems like a very useful tool, especially if you have a lot of facades uh, on your ME network, on your cables and stuff. So that's actually it for this video. Um, I needed to keep it kind of short. I don't get a lot of time. In the next episode, however, we are going to talk about the uh, matter condenser and the matter cannon, which is a gun in a platter in just 6 2, which is pretty cool. But it's kind of in depth, so we're going to give it its own video. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Sentinel H, and I'm signing out.